Oxygen and carbon dioxide diffuse between the alveoli and pulmonary capillaries in the lungs and between the systemic capillaries and cells throughout the body. The diffusion of these gases moving in opposite directions is called gas exchange. Your goals for learning are to apply gas law relationships between partial pressure, solubility, and concentration to gas exchange. To explore the factors which affect external and internal respiration. Here's what you need to know. The anatomy of the respiratory zone. The systemic and pulmonary circuits. To review the anatomy of the respiratory zone, click the link button. If you use a link button, you can return to the page you started from by clicking the return button. To see definitions of terms, click the bold red words. In order to understand gas exchange, we must first understand the air we breathe. The atmosphere is a mixture of gases including oxygen, carbon dioxide, nitrogen and water. Click the button to analyze the percentage of each gas in an air sample. The combined pressure of these gases equals atmospheric pressure. At sea level, atmospheric pressure is 760 millimeters of mercury, which means that the atmosphere pushes a column of mercury to a height of 760 millimeters. Each gas within the atmosphere is responsible for part of that pressure in proportion to its percentage in the atmosphere. Let's look more closely at gas pressure. Click the oxygen button to calculate its pressure. Watch the total pressure rise in the pressure gauge to the right. Oxygen comprises 20.9% of the atmosphere. The pressure exerted by oxygen is 20.9% of the total pressure of 760 millimeters of mercury, which equals 159 millimeters of mercury. This value is known as the partial pressure of oxygen and is written as P with a subscript O2. Click the gas buttons to calculate the remaining partial pressures. Notice that the partial pressures of the four gases add up to 760 millimeters of mercury, the total atmospheric pressure. This demonstrates Dalton's law of partial pressures, which states that in a mixture of gases, the total pressure equals the sum of the partial pressures exerted by each gas. The partial pressure of each gas is directly proportional to its percentage in the total gas mixture. Atmospheric pressure decreases with increasing altitude. For example, on the top of Mount Whitney, atmospheric pressure drops to approximately 440 millimeters of mercury. Click the button to collect an air sample at high altitude. Click the oxygen button to calculate its partial pressure. Oxygen still makes up 20.9% of the atmosphere, but the PO2 is 20.9% of 440 millimeters of mercury, or about 92 millimeters of mercury. Com As you can see, at high altitudes, the partial pressures of all gases are lower than at sea level. Within the lungs, oxygen and carbon dioxide diffuse between the air in the alveoli and the blood that is between a gas and a liquid. This movement is governed by Henry's Law, which states that the amount of gas which dissolves in a liquid is proportional to both the partial pressure and the solubility of the gas. In this container, the oxygen in the air is at equilibrium with the oxygen in the liquid. 
At equilibrium, the pressure of the oxygen in the air is the same as in the liquid, with the gas molecules diffusing at the same rate in both directions. What do you think will happen if you increase the pressure in the container? Click the weight to observe the effect of increased pressure. Notice that as the pressure increased, more oxygen molecules dissolved in the liquid, moving from a region of high pressure to a region of low pressure. Diffusion continued until a new equilibrium was reached. This is what happens when oxygen moves from the alveoli into the blood. Now let's look at the diffusion of carbon dioxide. Click the weight to create the same pressure as in the oxygen container. Did you notice that although both gases are at the same pressure, far more carbon dioxide dissolved in the liquid than oxygen? This occurs because carbon dioxide is much more soluble than oxygen. As stated in Henry's Law, the amount of oxygen and carbon dioxide which dissolves is proportional to the partial pressure and the solubility of each gas. We will return to this concept later. Let's look at the sites of gas exchange in the body. Blood that is low in oxygen is pumped from the right side of the heart through the pulmonary arteries to the lungs. External respiration occurs within the lungs as carbon dioxide diffuses from the pulmonary capillaries into the alveoli and oxygen diffuses from the alveoli into the pulmonary capillaries. Oxygen-rich blood leaves the lungs and is transported through the pulmonary veins to the left side of the heart. From there, it is pumped through the systemic circuit to tissues throughout the body. Internal respiration occurs within tissues as oxygen diffuses from the systemic capillaries into the cells and carbon dioxide diffuses from the cells into the systemic capillaries. Click the alveoli to learn more about external respiration. Let's look at the sites of gas Let's see how partial pressure gradients affect gas exchange between the alveoli and the pulmonary capillaries. Click the box to see partial pressures within an alveolus. Notice that the partial pressures in the alveoli differ from those in the atmosphere. This difference is caused by a combination of several factors. Humidification of inhaled air, gas exchange between the alveoli and pulmonary capillaries, and mixing of new and old air. Click the buttons to learn the effect of each factor. As air travels through the respiratory passageways to the alveoli, it is humidified, picking up water molecules. This greatly increases the partial pressure of water. A continuous exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide occurs between the alveoli and pulmonary capillaries, changing the partial pressures of both gases. Oxygen diffuses out of the alveoli into the pulmonary capillaries and carbon dioxide diffuses from the pulmonary capillaries into the alveoli. Since the alveoli do not completely empty between breaths, the air in the alveoli is a mixture of new air and air remaining from previous breaths. Let's first look at the loading of oxygen into the blood. Each alveolus is surrounded by a network of capillaries. Here, for simplicity, we are looking at a portion of one alveolus and one capillary. The PO2 of the alveolar air is 104 millimeters of mercury. At rest, the oxygen-poor blood entering the pulmonary capillaries has a PO2 of 40 millimeters of mercury. Click the button to see the PO2 increase as blood flows past the alveolus. 
Notice that there is a net diffusion of oxygen along its partial pressure gradient from the alveolus into the blood until equilibrium is reached. The PO2 of the oxygen-rich blood has increased to 104 millimeters of mercury. Click the button to see a graph of these changes in the blood. As indicated in the graph, equilibrium is reached rapidly within the first third of the pulmonary capillary. Now let's look at the unloading of carbon dioxide from the blood into the alveolus. The PCO2 of the alveolar air is 40 millimeters of mercury. At rest, the PCO2 of the blood entering the pulmonary capillaries is 45 millimeters of mercury. Click the button to see the PCO2 decrease as blood flows past the alveolus. Carbon dioxide diffuses along its partial pressure gradient from the blood into the alveolus until equilibrium is reached. The PCO2 of the blood has decreased to 40 millimeters of mercury. Click the button to see a graph of these changes in the blood. As indicated in the graph, Equilibrium is reached rapidly within the first four-tenths of the pulmonary capillary. Loading oxygen and unloading carbon dioxide actually occur simultaneously. As you inhale, you replenish oxygen, and as you exhale, you eliminate carbon dioxide. Click the button to see the simultaneous exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide. Notice how much smaller carbon dioxide's partial pressure gradient is than oxygen's. As Henry's law states, the number of molecules which dissolve in a liquid is proportional to both the partial pressure and the gas solubility. Since carbon dioxide is very soluble in blood, a large number of molecules diffuse along this small partial pressure gradient. Oxygen, which is less soluble, requires a much larger concentration gradient to provide adequate oxygen to the body. Let's look at the third factor in external respiration. Ventilation-perfusion coupling facilitates efficient gas exchange. It does this by maintaining alveolar airflow that is proportional to the pulmonary capillary blood flow. For a demonstration, click either bronchiole. When airflow through a bronchiole is restricted, as when blocked by mucus, the resulting low PO2 causes the local arterioles to vasoconstrict. This response redirects the blood to other alveoli which have a higher airflow and therefore have more oxygen available to be picked up by the blood. Now click the other bronchiole. In regions with high airflow compared to their blood supply, the resulting high PO2 causes the local arterioles to vasodilate. This brings more blood to the alveoli, allowing the blood to pick up the abundant oxygen. We've seen that during ventilation-perfusion coupling, the arterioles respond to changes in PO2. The bronchioles, on the other hand, respond to changes in PCO2. Click either bronchiole to see the effect of changing PCO2. When airflow through a bronchiole is lower than normal, the PCO2 rises. The bronchioles respond by dilating, thereby eliminating the excess carbon dioxide from the alveoli. Now click the other bronchiole. When airflow through a bronchiole is high compared to its blood supply, the PCO2 drops. The bronchioles then constrict, reducing the airflow so it is proportional to the local blood flow. Assume that ventilation to an alveolar sac is low due to a small tumor growing in the bronchiole. 
the PO2 decreases because oxygen is not replenished and the PCO2 increases because the carbon dioxide is not eliminated. See if you can predict the response of the arterioles and bronchioles. Click the correct button. No. Think about the situation again. No. Think about the situation again. Correct. The low PO2 causes the arterioles to constrict and the high PCO2 causes the bronchioles to dilate. The airflow and blood flow are now in the proper proportions for optimum gas exchange. Notice that both the arterioles and bronchioles respond simultaneously. Now let's turn our attention to internal respiration. During internal respiration, let's look at the exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide during internal respiration. Remember that capillaries typically branch profusely within tissues, but here we are looking at only one capillary and two layers of cells. In relatively inactive organs, the tissue cells have a PO2 of 40 millimeters of mercury and a PCO2 of 45 millimeters of mercury. As the blood enters the systemic capillaries, it has a PO2 of 100 millimeters of mercury and a PCO2 of 40 millimeters of mercury. Notice that the PO2 of blood entering the systemic capillaries is lower than the alveolar PO2 of 104 millimeters of mercury. This small decrease is due primarily to imperfect ventilation perfusion coupling in the lungs. Click the capillary to see the simultaneous exchange of both oxygen and carbon dioxide. Gas exchange continues until equilibrium is reached. At equilibrium, the blood in the systemic capillaries has a PO2 of 40 millimeters of mercury and a PCO2 of 45 millimeters of mercury. The oxygen-poor blood now returns through the systemic veins to the right side of the heart. Here's a summary of what we've covered. Gas laws show the relationship between partial pressure, solubility, and concentration of gases. Gases diffuse along their partial pressure gradients from regions of high partial pressure to regions of low partial pressure. During external respiration, oxygen loads from alveoli into pulmonary capillaries and carbon dioxide unloads from pulmonary capillaries into alveoli. During internal respiration, oxygen unloads from systemic capillaries into cells and carbon dioxide loads from cells into systemic capillaries. Efficient gas exchange depends on several factors, including surface area, partial pressure gradients, blood flow, and air flow. During external respiration, ventilation perfusion coupling maintains air flow and blood flow in proper proportions for efficient gas exchange.